Hey everybody, Chuck back today. A couple things I want to go over today, real quickly. This I hope is not going to be a very long video. But I had a couple of things change recently, and I want to touch base on also on the, the pet fang and the cooler update I did as well. But first and foremost, you'll notice you're looking at the screen of my Ender 3. I'm going to pop the power onto it. And the first thing you're going to notice when it adjusts is the stock firmware is no longer on the Ender 3. I use the TH3D Studios Unified Marlin firmware update. And kudos and thanks to them for providing that, as well as the creator of Marlin, Scott, I, whose last name is escaping me, and the current Marlin team for keeping this updated and released. So, TH3D Studios sells a number of different things. Um, the Easy ABL Automatic Bed Leveling Kit, as well as a number of things. They sell print beds and other upgrades and boards, and I bought my little Arduino Uno board because, like an idiot, I thought I was done with Arduinos a year or so ago and gave them all, everything I had with it away. Back when I was way back when I was make, trying to make a pulse width modulation fan controller for my old Jeep CJ7 and I messed around with that for a while with the Arduino and I finally just gave up and um, and bought a pre-made one probably spent more on the Arduino than I actually did on the pre-made one anyway TH3D Studios releases all of this stuff and it's the, the unified firmware is free to use the things in it that, that are work for their automatic bed leveling system, they have locked in some way or another. I haven't investigated that. Automatic bed leveling right now doesn't really seem to be necessary to me. But if it is, I will probably buy their kit. But the first thing you notice when it starts up is the Ender 3 logo is gone. And I hope you can see that. I'm looking at the computer screen. I'm not using my phone this time. I'm using my wife's Logitech C922 camera and I'm looking at the screen and it looks like you can see it pretty good you'll notice the Ender logo is gone and there is a progress bar as well on it a timer and a progress bar which I kinda like gives you a print print progress and percentage and under prepare you have pretty much the same things you were used to before but um, now you can home each individual axis, axis as well as all of them. And this is pretty handy, really. You can move them all. When you come to extruder, you'll see now you can move the extruder both 10 millimeters and 1 and 0.1 if you want. Or in the previous one, you could only move it to smaller amounts. And, whoops, let me go back up one more in control. You'll see there is a lot more settings and things to do and submenus. I don't not a fully understanding exactly what all of these do yet, but at some point in time I'm probably going to start experimenting with them. So there is actually quite a few more settings and things you can do. And this you'll notice the beep is gone, which I'm personally thankful for. And also when you go say to control the temperature we'll just run the nozzle up here a little bit when you go go to control the temperature each click of the knob as you go is one degree and before it was like 10 and now you really got to run the knob around a lot to get to 200 or above I don't know that I care about that really about the only time I'm doing that is when I'm changing filament so that's not a big deal. Now, as far as installing this is concerned, I'm going to tell you right up front that I am a self-employed computer IT guy, and my specialty is solving problems in both hardware and software. I'm very good at it. So I've got a little bit of a head start there in doing this kind of thing, and I've worked with Arduinos in the past. I've forgotten most of it, but, you know, big deal it comes back to me. If you don't have some computer skills or are familiar with Arduinos, I would suggest that maybe you don't want to do this, especially not if it's the only 3D printer you have and you want to use it right now. Installing the bootloader requires that you use an Arduino. 
and I bought the, the kit from TH3D mainly just because it has all little wires in it because I kind of felt like I kind of owed him something since I was using the firmware that he assembled. So I bought theirs for I think it was $14.95 plus a couple bucks shipping. He got it to me really quick. The board does not have to come out of, of the, the printer. You can leave the board, and I'm just going to zoom back here a little bit. You can leave the board in the little box. You can unplug the printer completely because when the board plugs into it and you power the board, then it powers the LCD screen. So you don't need power, you don't need AC power to it. You have to first connect the Arduino to your computer and flash the bootloader to it. That in itself, or you know, put the sketch on the Arduino from your computer. Now, I watched TH3D's video on that, and it was very helpful. But there, and take it from me as a, a computer guy, I know this. There are some things that are so normal for you because you do them all the time, you either gloss over them or skip them because you just assume it's common knowledge, and it's not. So there's a couple sticking points in it, and there's an easy, pretty easy way around them. One of the sticking points is he has you select Sanguino, which is the name of the board that's in the Ender. He has you select that from a list, but it isn't there in the list in the stock Arduino IDE software. You actually have to go out and get it. Plus, he has you select Arduino ISP as the sketch you're going to put in, but then later on when you go to flash the board, you have to use Arduino as ISP. And Arduino ISP will be there too. And if you're really not paying super close attention and pick the first one, it'll fail. Now, it doesn't damage the board when it fails, but it will fail and you'll be scratching your head wondering why. So there is an easy way around it. If you download his firmware first, he has a portable version of the Arduino IS, Arduino IDE software that is already pre-configured. And had I known that first, it would have probably saved me half an hour of scratching my head and going out on the internet and looking for things and installing them in. After that, it is really pretty simple. You just, you leave the board plugged in and you just give the command to flash the firmware to the board. The Arduino isn't even necessary anymore. The computer plugs directly into the micro USB socket on the front of the Ender 3's control box. So if you have some, some computer skills, some Arduino skills, it's not really that big a deal. If you don't and it doesn't go right the first time, you're probably going to panic and be stuck and not know what to do. So think about it before you do it. TH3D does not give tech support for this for free. Now, if you purchase his Easy ABL kit, you will get tech support. Whether or not, how, how, let me say this, how far he'll go holding your hand because you bought a $50, $70 kit from him, I don't know. But he does say he does give tech support for it. I did not buy that kit because, again, I really, right now, I'm not seeing the need for bed leveling. If I was still using the Stock Ender 3 bed that was dished, yeah, but with the mirror on it, yeah, I'm just not seeing it being necessary. Okay, I think that's out of the way. Now, one thing I'm going to do while we're talking here, I want to get a print started. So I'm going to back the camera out, and I'm going to set it up a little bit. Now, let's see where we're going. And I'd like, yeah, I don't want that. That's my, um, for the, oh, for those of you who have complained that I have used one, of a, one or two of ABE's lines, you know, there's this mug over there to prove that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> at least, at least in that one regard. So let me get a print started, and I want to talk to you real quick about the pet fang and one or two other things real quick. So I've got everything loaded in. All I've got to do is say print from SD card. I got the filament I want loaded in, and was that the right one? I don't know. Let me stop and go back and look, make sure that was the right one. Print from SD card. I have two in there with a very similar name. Yeah, okay, it was the right one. Okay, there it's going again. So, quick update on the... Oh, one other thing about... Let me tell you a couple other things about the... The 
firmware update. I wasn't really expecting to get better prints with it. Why I put it in was because I wanted the electrical protections back in it that Creality took out for some reason. And there's a lot of speculation on why they took it out, but they did. So things like Thermal Runaway are back in this version. If you're going to leave your printer running all night long or when you're away from the, the house or the shop or the garage or wherever you have it, it is highly recommended that you put the firmware back that has these, these electrical protections in it. Thermal Runaway for the bed and for the nozzle being probably the main thing. The other thing they suggest to do, of course, is putting MOSFETs in for the um, bed and nozzle heat power. I haven't done that yet. I'm considering it, but I um, eh, probably will eventually. I've got another Ender 3 coming. It's already shipped. I should have it probably within a week. So I'll have one to experiment on and um, one to run my production stuff I want to run. And you see one of my other print things there. This is something I got off Thingiverse for my wife for bottles of vape juice. And of course I had that pink translucent filament in it. Problem is, the um, I really like the design. I really think the guy who designed it, I like the way he curved it up in the back. I think it was really good looking. Of course, problem is you probably can't put the bottles in the back first without you have to blow it from the front to keep it stable. But the problem is the holes are too small. They only fit the really small plastic bottles, not the, the glass ones, which everybody seems to want, or at least she's, she wants. So anyway, let's get that out of the way so it's purpleness and pinkness is not in the way. Something else I just picked up recently is something I was missing from the previous videos, a box of short pieces of different size of heat shrink tubing. I think they're like, like seven bucks off Amazon, so worthwhile to have if you're going to make these, these, um, these little modifications like the fans and other things. So, bed is heating, so we're good to go there. But I was saying that I wasn't really expecting better, better print quality. But I have printed the exact same thing, and I have noticed print times are down a little bit with this firmware, as well as I believe print quality is up. And that was something I was really not expecting, as I said. Another thing that the new firmware seems to be doing is the direction changes are more abrupt. There's... I don't know if it's something Creality did or if it's just an older firmware, but when when one of the axes, say the um, the bed or the the extruder axis, changes direction quickly, it is more abrupt now. My little tool holder up there, that little tool holder there, the tools are really shaking around when I have, you know, like say five, six, seven millimeter wide and a triangle infill and it's going back and forth. It wasn't doing that before. And I know because this is something I've printed quite a number of times. And it's really obvious those tools up there dancing and rattling around when they weren't before. Just two little things I'm noticing right off the bat about the new firmware. For the most part, I like it. I like the extra controls. I absolutely like the the electrical safety aspect of it. The um, I don't know if the abrupt changes in direction have anything to do with the print quality. Unfortunately, I'm not good enough. I haven't been doing this long enough to know. But um, I must because it is certainly an obvious difference. The Pets Fang and my little fan here. One thing I'm noticing about this Pets Fang that I like better and some of you have commented that you don't like this setup because it's hard to see the nozzle, and you're right. It does make it harder to see the nozzle. But one thing I have noticed that is that overhangs are nicer. And the only thing I can attribute that to is, A, more cooling air, and cooling air from both sides of the nozzle. So that in itself is a good thing. This here... Let me, let me adjust this slightly so you can see. This here, I could have put a regular fan on the front of it very easily. That would have made the nozzle a little easier to see. But it's pretty easy to look in from, you know, look in at, a, at an angle like that 
rather than straight and under it and you can still see the nozzle it's not that hard but um i have to admit it is a little gaudy and the first time i change it i may try putting a regular fan on it i just like the idea of being able to use the same fan for everything i i'm actually tempted to use this kind of fan for down here but um i got clearance issues with the bed but if it was laid on its side with a downturn it might something something about having the same fan for everything kind of appeals to me because that means i don't have to keep a bunch of different fans to keep um to keep it working in case one fails and i'm sure i'm going to be printing all this again for the second printer which arrives like i said should arrive within a week next and last thing i want to talk about in this video is i was approached via email by somebody at gearbest who would like to be some kind of supportive of of these videos I'm making and as an entrepreneur I mentioned in another video that you're always looking for a new stream of income because none last forever clients go away they retire they move they get mad at you for some reason or another and find somebody else you know a product that you've been making for years now is no longer popular all kinds of stuff no income stream lasts forever so while you may not be actively looking you're always got your eye open i don't see any bad side of a relationship like this all they're really asking that i do is put affiliate links in affiliate links you can click on them if you want if you don't don't it's not going to cost you any more if you do but if an affiliate link is something you don't like i'm sure you're smart enough to figure out how to go to gearbest and order it without clicking on the affiliate link um, I haven't put affiliate links in up to this point, even though I certainly could with Amazon for some of the things I've done. I haven't. One thing I will do is when I put an affiliate link, I will mark it as an affiliate link. You will absolutely know. But um, I'd like to get my own camera and a couple other things in here. And if affiliate link can um, help me out with that without me having to go do something like make a Patreon page, then I'm going to do that thing. And we'll see how it works. Nothing's set in stone. Anything can change. So we'll see what happens. And that's about it for today. Hope you got some useful information out of this. If you have any questions about the TH3D firmware, flashing it, let me know. I'll be happy to try and answer it. As I said, TH3 does not provide free tech support for it. And I'm not going to provide free tech support either. But I will answer any questions I can up to you know the the limitations that are in the in the youtube comment section and the same with the pets fang and the fans and everything else i've done here and oh i was asked about about petg that is going to be my next video as soon as the print you see on it is done i have this i have a i have a i have a spool of, of P, black PETG right here, and I am I have a small maker coin I have designed for myself. So we'll be doing that maker coin in the next video. Hope I've provided you some useful information. If you have any questions or comments or just want to say anything to me, go ahead and leave it in the section below. Hope you're having a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.